<sighs> so let the games begin. <laughs> what, what am I doing? I'm going to do something today that you should not do. Do not do this at home. I am going to, we're going to put four different types of grass seeds on this backyard. We're going to let them compete, see which one wins. Hold on. Hey guys. So if you know anything, this is the new um, farmhouse project in this backyard. We're actually going to put irrigation back here, but we have temporary, we have a annual ryegrass back here. We finally got grass to take. The next thing we're gonna put down, I made a mistake, I guess, and I ordered some, um, it's a, a hybrid bluegrass. So, but I, what I really wanted and what I did order uh, was combat zone, which is a mix of three different fescues that are supposed to be, again, heat and drought resistant. We're gonna put that down. We're gonna let this lawn battle it out and I'm gonna walk you through this. But uh, next month, I'm also gonna come out with some zoysia seed. Why am I doing this? I'm just doing it really for you guys, just to have some fun. This is the first year with the lawn. I really don't care. I just wanna see what we'll take. Which grass is gonna do well? I have some shade issues, soil issues. So I'll show you, we'll talk about reseeding a little bit. I'll give you a couple tips, but let me take you right in and I'm gonna show you uh, my seed cabinet because we have got a ton of fields and we're doing a whole bunch of seeding out here. So hold on. Okay, so I kind of talked to you the other day, I talked to you about all the lawns that I have out here. So I've got this backyard we're gonna mess with, we're gonna do that experiment. Then I also have my green area. What's my green area? My green area was a nasty area between the house and the barn. And we came in here with the skid steer, we raked this whole thing and we seeded it. And now look at it, isn't that gorgeous? So we wanna keep it like this. So I went to Lowe's and I picked up some cheap Kentucky 31 Pennington, it was on sale. We're gonna throw out some fescue out here, see how it does. The other lawn I have is the whole roadside. I have a quarter mile of road frontage and I'm gonna put Bermuda seed. So I bought some cheap Bermuda seed out there. Now I'm gonna warn you. Now I talk about this in the lawn guides. Make sure you get the lawn guides if you don't have them, please. There's an individual website for each type of grass, Bermuda, zoysia, and cool season grasses. There's calendars, there's product links, there's answers to all your questions, grubs, bugs, disease, whatever go there. We even talk about seeding. But one thing you don't want to do is if you have a Bermuda lawn or a zoysia lawn and it was planted in sod, you don't want to go out and buy seed and overseed that. You want to bring that back to life. And that's a really important point. So anyways, let me show you my seed cabinet real quick. My wife has to hang a wreath on my tool shed. <laughs> anyways, this place is an absolute disaster right now. You have to excuse me, but it's a little bit dark. So let me show you the seeds that I've got here. This is the Bermuda grass that I bought at Lowe's, just a cheap bag of Bermuda grass. We're gonna put that on the roadside out front. This is the FPF 30, SPF 30 hybrid. It's supposed to be heat and, heat and drought tolerant. And this is Combat Extreme. Now this is a blend of three fescues we're gonna put out there. What do I got here? Uh, buckwheat for the fields, white Dutch clover for the fields. And then down here, I've got this uh, Pennington Kentucky 31. That's what we're gonna put in that big field. All right, so first of all, if you're wondering about the, our Bermuda grass at the other house, we went over there today, we put down PGF complete. Everything has been set back by these cold temperatures. So we had green grass coming up, 20s came in, and guess what? Everything went dormant again. The whole neighborhood was brown again. <laughs> so it's kind of like we're resetting. Today, we have a little bit of rain moving in, so we went over there, we put down PGF complete. Tomorrow or the next day, we're gonna go over there and cut and trim, get that lawn restarted again. It's like restarting all over again. But if you're planning to do any seeding, I say this time and time again, cut your grass short and keep cutting it. I'm gonna cut this every other day. I do not want this grass to grow because the seeds only have so much energy to come up and reach the sunlight. So you wanna keep cutting it, keep cutting it. Um, I'm using the Ego out here and I'm just basically just uh, have it on a mulch cycle, and I don't worry about the seeds moving or anything like that. Next, a little bit of fertilizer. I'm putting down a little bit of PGF Complete uh, 1608 here because I'm high in phosphorus, and Dirt Booster. I am putting down Dirt Booster. We do that now every time we seed, mainly so that the, the mycorrhizal fungi spores are out there. That's what we want, so I'm putting down Dirt Booster. 
Um, I'll show you what we did. I'll run through just some of the video, show you the seeds, but this will be an interesting experiment. This will be fun to watch. Now I'm gonna take you this uh, next week, hit subscribe, and I'm gonna take you over to the other lawn and we'll show you how we're gonna restore that lawn, make it absolutely beautiful over there. One more tip when seeding. Water, water, water. Remember, dry seed does not germinate. <laughs> it will not germinate. And it is a pain in the ass to come out here two, three, and four times a day to water, but you gotta do it. You gotta keep this seed wet. Not soaking wet, just misting wet. We were supposed to have rain all day today, and I've seen like 20 raindrops. I'm like, dude, this isn't gonna work. So I'm coming out here, even though it's cloudy, and we were supposed to have rain, I'm coming out and I'm misting, I'm just misting the lawn just to get this seed wet. That's all I'm doing. Isn't this exciting? Now this is must-see TV. <laughs> so I'm changing the oil on my UTV because I've been beating the living hell out of it with this sprayer. So that's what. Hey guys, Doc, <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> so here's the deal. I sent the girls down to the beach house. My wife, the dogs, went down with my brother and sister-in-law, so they're down at the beach house. They're having an enjoyable time. And I'm like, dude, I got too much work around here. This is planting season and grass season. I can't go. So they're down there for like three weeks or something. Have fun. So some of you guys are gonna say, Doc, you're barely cutting that grass. That's the point. I do not want to let this grass get tall during seeding. Um, I, I want to keep cutting it, cutting it, cutting it. I have the back gate of my thing barely open. It just helps with the airflow. So if I do pick up any seed, it's going right back down. But. morning so it's the next day um i just got word back from my pump guy my well guy and let me show you what we're doing out here for this irrigation system so you may know there's a little shed way up there pump house that we built ryan and i built that that's a 600 foot deep well and i'm gonna do a video on my filtration system that's in there and in the house i have the world's cleanest water at my house the old submersible, excuse me, the old shallow well. So shallow wells are, is, is a, it's, it's also called a board well. So it's like 24 inches wide and 30 feet deep. So we just built this little shack around it to insulate it. And I just pulled out some of the winter insulation in it, but you can see it has an old jet pump on it. And it's fine for running a hose, but it's a lot of demand for a uh, irrigation system. So Larry's coming over. He's gonna pick up uh, a submersible pump that'll actually do better and be able to handle all that. And I have no idea how old that pump is either. And I just don't want it to fail. The other thing I did is if you didn't watch the renovation video on the house is up underneath where that water line comes in, I had them install a three quarter inch full spigot in the event 
that my main well should fail for some reason, and they are known to fail once in a while, um, I can actually run a hose from that well into my crawl space, hook up that well, and have water in the house while that pump's being fixed for a week or two or however long it takes. So I'm trying to think stuff through here. So one more side note for you guys, if you're interested. <laughs> this is must-see TV here, Doc. This is really good stuff. <laughs> uh, when we first bought this place, the fields had clumping fescue. It was up to our waist. There were ant piles that were literally three feet wide and two feet high. And if you stepped on one of those things, and if you were any ways allergic to fire ants, then you would be at the hospital. That's how bad it was. So we have been out here just spot treating fire ants. And I know this year I've killed over 150 mounds. We've really done a good job on the population. But up here we have some, God, this stuff stinks. This stuff really stinks. Bear makes it and ortho makes it. Dude, it is the worst smelling stuff in the world, but it works. And so you're not supposed to, I don't think you're supposed to disturb the mound, but I just make sure that it's an active mound by stepping on it. And those little buggers right there, they will light you up, light you up. That's all I'm doing to them. So like over here, we missed one over here. Here they come. Just a very light coat is all we need on it and that's it. So if you're still hanging around, um, I'm actually up at what we call Bald Spot. I did a video on this the other day for our uh, food plots in the woods. We came up here and we put down clover. I put down, I think I put down a little buckwheat up here. I can't remember. I'm not sure if I did. Um, and then I just did a tine till. You just drag tines across this. And it, about every six to eight inches, a tine goes about three or four inches deep. But you can see that I still have actively growing roots in the ground. So I'm not tilling this. But I wanted to show you, I put this down, the soil was a little dry, and then we got a nice heavy rain. It was only about a 15 minute downpour, but it was a downpour. And let me see, I just saw a bunch of seed germinating. Yeah, look, you can see these little green sprouts everywhere. Look right there. And here, and here. It should turn out nice. Now, we own an additional 20 acres back here that's really, really thick woods. And we built, um, after monitoring this place for last year, we saw over a thousand deer during hunting season and we took one deer. We actually managed this for the wildlife, the turkey, the deer, the fish. But um, <clears throat> we noticed that there was a huge amount of deer traffic back in here because what they do at night, I'm looking for red ants by the way, because at night they travel through this corridor and they go up to my fields and they flood those fields because they're just lush and green. So what I wanted to do was, I'll take you back here. We built what we call our, our redneck skybox. <laughs> no other word for it. It's a monster stand. Still, still a few things left to do on it, but let me show you. So you can see just how thick this area is in here. I mean, it's just super thick. <clears throat> And there are deer trails through here that look like someone's been riding dirt bikes. I mean, they're just so prominent. Like this trail here, yes, we've used it, but it was here, the deer were actually putting this trail in here. So, <laughs> that's a 16 foot ladder right there. And from that stand, you can see this all sort of tails down and there's a big valley down in here. Well, I was talking about replacing this old pump here and guess who showed up? Larry called me and said, I'm coming by today. So there's no telling how old this system is. <laughs> You're right about that. 
Good lord. So I know that they replace I know that they re replace the pump once because there's an old there's an old jet pump up in that abandoned storage building up there, so I know that they replaced it once. They probably done it more than once. But Larry was telling me that we're gonna put in a submersible and basically because the theory is it's easier to push water than it is to pull water and it doesn't lose its prime. So here is the new pump that's going in a submersible. And then he'll go ahead and rig this up and my irrigation guy will have easy access to it. So how deep is this well? About 30 feet deep. 30 feet. So this is, this is the shallow well that's been here. And it's about 30 feet by about 24 inches wide. You know what's funny is, I was down over in the back field over here in the woods. Mm -hmm. Guess what I found? Another well back there. I mean, I don't know why you'd have one. I guess maybe cattle or goats or whatever he had. Yeah, they probably used it for something with that. Okay, so that's all done. So yesterday, Ryan was putting together an armoire for me that we ordered. <laughs> Dude. He's so tired of putting shit together. But anyways, this is a little, it's a kind of a plastic shed. Two doors and a roof. This will be for the generator. And we have a whole house generator plug. Right here. So that's my whole house. And all I do if I lose power is I go in, I shut off my main, I have a main switch in there, transfer switch, shut off the main power, kick on the generator, turn off my 220s. But anyways, uh, this is actually 110, believe it or not. I had them convert it from a 220 to a 110. You can you do either on it. So it is running 110 and I gotta say, I'm impressed. I am really impressed. I've got double the, the flow and almost a lot more pressure. So here's what I'm left with now. And that's shooting probably 40 feet. 50 feet almost. That's incredible. Anyways, we'll watch this germination. We'll watch this battle take place. Oh, bust my butt and I'll talk to you later. Doc.